first seeing as Scarlet Witch on X-Men Evolution, but now you can see her as Starlight Glimmer on My Little Pony. Get over Kelly Sherry! No, you welcome. <laughs> welcome. Yes. Uh, welcome. Yeah, that was my getting onto the stage, Jake. Did you guys like it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's totally improvised, completely off the cuff. That's what us actors do. Yeah, welcome to day two. You've been enjoying your stay with us? So awesome. Been having a great time. I'm enjoying all the cosplay and uh, hanging out, getting to meet you guys. It's great. It's been Are you guys having fun? Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is like all like what you're... Wouldn't it be terrible if you're all like, no. <laughs> you'd, you'd be killing me, Smalls. This is magic and sparkles me. and awesomeness and friendship. It's fine, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Now, as I said uh, before you came out, that I actually remember first hearing you as Scarlet Witch from X-Men Evolution. Oh, yeah. Uh, were you much of a comic book fan or a superhero fan in general growing up? I wasn't really. All I did enjoy, that I watched the... Um, what was the X-Men cartoon that was on in the, was it the late 80s, early 90s? Uh, I think the uh, Fox Kids one. Yeah, I loved that. Um, and, but I didn't really read comics when I was younger. I read more comics now, or more graphic novels now, than I did when I was a kid. So. Now, uh, your first appearance at Starlight Glimmer actually had you singing in character. Was that actually rather difficult to pull off, seeing that it was just the first time we're seeing Starlight? Yeah, well, it was scary because I didn't know the character had a song when I auditioned for the show. And they didn't do a singing audition. They just had me read... Uh, you know what? Okay, so here's the audition story for Starlight. I know it's not what you're asking, but it's kind of an interesting story. I was in Kuala Lumpur, and my, um, I was traveling. I was there for one night. I was on my way to a different place. I was in a hotel room, and my agent sent me an email and said, Can you please record something? and send it, send an mp3 and here's the one page of stuff. So I built a little pillow fort in my hotel room and a little mini sound studio and got out my iPad and recorded the thing and sent it off and kind of forgot about it and I was traveling for two weeks and then I was flying back home and the day I flew home on my 30 hour flight, um, I just said, you got it, you gotta be in the studio tomorrow. So here's the script and here's your song materials and learn it on the plane, see you tomorrow. <laughs> and I went, song, there's a song? So, um, so yeah, it was, uh, that was exciting, but it was, it's always actually easier to sing in character than to sing. Really? Yeah, I find, because I have something to kind of, I don't know, we have some technique to rely on or something to hide behind or, um, I don't know, it just gives you that little extra oomph that makes it easier. So, yeah. Now, I know you've also done voiceover work for commercials, various ads. Is How different is doing voiceover for that than, say, a cartoon? Um, really different. The Mostly in style. So when we do cartoons, it's very theatrical. It pays to have a, the a theater background, which I do. And cartoons tend to be way more broad and projected and over the top. So film and TV people, when they've only done film and TV, they have a hard time transitioning to voiceover work. because. They're used to being sort of small and intimate, and, you know, the camera's like right here in your face. And that's what commercials are like. They oftentimes, they want a really natural conversational delivery, and you end up being really close to the microphone when you're doing commercial work. So they're very different in style. And then the other thing is, when you're doing a commercial, you're selling something. So you have to emphasize the product without being too over the top about... So basically you don't... Mac or whatever. You don't want to Billy Mays it, essentially. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the biggest note you get from clients when you're doing a commercial is don't oversell it. Well, you know, you want to underplay it. But still sell it a little bit. You know, they want you to emphasize um, McDonald's or whatever it is. Staples. Whatever. Yeah. Now, uh, I think uh, some of you may uh, know that she, you were also the voice of Sassy Saddles. Uh, yes, I was. <laughs> Are we ever going to possibly see that character again? I don't know. Maybe. I, I'm curious about what's going on in the boutique. What she's been doing on her own. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to see her again. I can't answer whether we will or not, but um, what do you think hopefully. Of, what do you think of that character as compared to Starlight? Oh, there are some similarities. Huh. Um, they're both a bit 
kind of bossy and headstrong. Sure. <laughs> Maybe that's typecasting. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> um, yeah, and they both sort of had, but I think with Sassy it was more, um, I think it was unintentional. I think she, um, I think she honestly thought she was doing the right thing. Actually, Starlight did too, though. So yeah, I don't know, there are some similarities there. I have to admit, when I first saw her, uh, pl or like her plan idea, the first thought that came to my head is, my God, you are nickel back again. I was going to look more for you guys. Let's see, whoever has a question, please raise your hoof. Did you guys know Emily Blunt's going to be in the My Little Pony movie? Yep. Isn't that neat? It was announced, I don't know, a while ago, a couple months ago. Yeah. I just wonder if that has anything to do with Sassy. Like, I wonder if she knew that, because I'm pretty sure that character was modeled after her character in Devil Wears Prada, so. Um, yeah, it's kind of neat. Is there a possibility of seeing more of Starlight and Sunburst the other more often? I hope so. They're so cute. I hope so. I can't really talk about stuff. I, I make it a rule to not talk about stuff that hasn't aired yet, but um, I would love to see more of him. Is there anything that you can tell us? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I can tell you that Ian Hanlon, who plays Starburst, is delightful to work with. He's just a, he's Starburst. He's like a, just a hilarious, sweet, delightful person. He's Starburst. He said Starburst. <laughs> he's like candy. That's how sweet he is. Yeah, that's Pinkie Pie's domain, right? <laughs> yeah. Hi, um, what's the name of the Pinkie Pie movie? How was that like? Oh, that was amazing. She was one of my favorite characters I ever played. Um, we were talking about her yesterday. I really relate to Songo. I mean, I'm not an awesome, super talented demon slayer, but other than that, we're exactly the same. Uh, yeah, I love her. I love like her humor and her vulnerability and her relationship with her brother and her perseverance and her bravery. She's just awesome. Just amazing to play a character like that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of other actors that you've worked with, how's Kathleen Barr? Oh, she's great. Everyone wants to know about Trixie. Kathleen's lovely. Yeah, I've known Kathleen since I was a kid. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, she's great. She doesn't really come to conventions. She's very shy and very private. But it's nothing personal, though. No, no. She thinks the fandom's awesome, um, as far as I know. We don't talk about it that often, but uh, she's just very... She's kind of... She's not a flutter shy, because she's very, like, personable when you meet her. She's, she's not shy in that way, but she, I don't think she likes the attention, which is why she does voiceover, because... I see. She's maybe kind of unrecognizable, and pardon me? Maybe she's more like Twilight. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like the opposite of Trixie. Right. <laughs> but, but working with her, especially as Trixie, oh, it's just so fun. She's just, she gets right into that character. Yeah. I think uh, the first time I ever noticed her as a voice actor was in one of my favorite card scenes and one of the most underrated, Dragon Booster. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I... Well, I would wait till like 3 a.m. in the morning to watch that show when it came on Disney XD. She's hugely talented. She's just one of those actresses in town. She's like Nicole, who can do anything. So she gets cast on tons of stuff because they want someone who's really versatile. So she can still play teenagers. She can play the mom. She can do any accent you can think of. She's got a lovely, like, sort of deep bassiness in her voice that she can access, which is funny when you think of Trixie, because Trixie's kind of up there. I can't do Trixie, but that's my horrible impression. But um, yeah, so she's great. I love her. So um, last panel, Peter New told us that he also did voice acting for um, Amy Yasha. So I'm curious if um, you ever worked with any other people from the show previously before the movie? Um, well, yeah, most of them, because it's a small community in Vancouver. So unfortunately, when you do dub recording, so when we do a show that was originally created in Japan and we dub it, in English, we don't actually get to work with each other on those projects. They come, you come in on your own, and you do just your lines, and that's it. When we do something that's called a prelay, which is something like My Little Pony, then we get to work with each other in the studio and play off with each other. But yes, I had worked with all of those people before. I work with um, Richard Ian Cox frequently, and um, David Kay, and um, well, I don't know, all those people. Yeah, it's a small world in Vancouver. We all kind of know each other. 
So I met, I first watched you in a like an anime called Nana. Oh yeah. Loved it. Me and Rebecca Shoigen. Yes. And and that's the last name. You had yes. like like a ditzy <laughs> feminine oh, character in that one. Mm -hmm. How did it feel like a difference to go from you know somebody that they just absolutely are in love with every boy they see to playing a villain in a character who really has nothing other than something. Right. It's fun. It's, I mean, that's one of the reasons I'm an actor, because I get to do something different at work every day. And I get to be different people every day. Um, so that's the, that's, it's always fun. It's, it's fun to be able to transform from one thing to the next. Sometimes in one script. Sometimes, you know, as voiceover actors, sometimes we play more than one character in one episode or something. Sure. Especially on a show like this, or My Little Pony. So that's fun. And you know, it's amazing, for example, watching Andrea Lindman in a session, and sometimes she has a conversation with herself as Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. And just watching her go, from here to here, <laughs> in, one, in one scene, just talking to herself back and forth. It's pretty neat. No. It's fun. Yeah. Hey, uh, what made you want to go into voice acting? I mean, what, was that kind of your first passion? Yeah, I started when I was a kid. I was 13. Um, and I like to say that I can't do anything else. I don't know how to do anything else. Uh, yeah, I've always been a performer. I've always like put on shows in my living room for my parents. And um, I started in children's theater, and the woman that ran the theater also had an agency that represented young people, people under 18. And she started sending me on film and TV auditions, which I didn't really enjoy very much. I didn't really enjoy doing film and TV because it was a lot of sort of sitting around and waiting. I preferred theater where you show up and you're rehearsing and you're working the whole time. When you're on a film set, you're just kind of sitting in a trailer and the people that do all the heavy lifting are people who are setting up lights and setting up the shot. And then you come in as an actor for five minutes and do your little bit. Then you go and sit in the trailer for another four hours. So I like to be busy. Um, yeah, so I did a little bit of film and TV when I was a teenager, but then I started auditioning for voiceover work, and that was at a time where it was getting really popular in Vancouver, and a lot of people were doing it. And I just sort of started at the right time. And I went back. Another thing, are you a hockey fan? I'm not really a hockey fan. <laughs> My husband is a, a rabid Canucks fan because we're from Vancouver, so he sees every game. Yeah, not avid, rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him they're up, they're gonna be something. I think they're. Oh, thanks. I think they're getting there. You see, I'm a Lightning fan, but I have a feeling that Vancouver is gonna, you know, win it one day. Yeah, we've had some tr troubles in the past, hey. and then our city does not enjoy it. Be thankful. Be thankful they've been to the finals. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We've been there a couple times, but now thank I'm you. Busy. Yeah, not super duper into hockey. It's in my blood, I guess, being Canadian. I grew up watching it, but sure. I don't really pay attention. Hi. Hi. Do you like Starlight Glimmer? I love Starlight. Yeah, I do. Um, what do you enjoy about Starlight Glimmer? Well, I enjoyed playing her when she was bad, because it's always fun. Yeah. Always fun to play the bad guy. You get to indulge in those impulses that we don't, hopefully, that we don't um, indulge in in real life. And, uh, and I like playing a character that's that complex. I think she's had this reformation, but, and, and I know a lot of fans have sort of complained about, oh, it felt too quick. She changed her mind too quickly. But I don't think, I, I think sometimes life is made up in moments like that when you have sort of a snap, when you, you have an epiphany or you have you know, a snap yeah. decision and you go, oh, wow, and you wake up to something. But that doesn't mean the work's suddenly done. That doesn't mean like, I'm better now, I'm good, and I know how to make friends, and I know how to be nice, and I know how to whatever. She's got a long road ahead of her, and I think that's really interesting to play as a character. It's interesting, you, as an actor, you don't want things to go well for characters you play. It's fun to play a character who's struggling, because that gives you something to do as an actor. Um, it's not as fun in real life when that happens, but... But it's fun to play characters who struggle. And there's, I think there's a lot of, I think she's very funny, unintentionally. Oh, yes. So I think there's a lot of comedy that comes from her just like, who are you ponies? Like, everything's so easy for you guys. I think that's kind of fun. 
Personally, it wasn't that, that I thought was too quick. It was the citizens of our town that I thought were gay, which is fantastic. Yeah, man, they're nice. Whoa. Maybe she wrote them a letter ahead of time, <laughs> and so they were ready for her arrival, and they had some time to discuss it at a, a town meeting. <laughs> Alright, I really have to agree with you about um, Charlotte's attention. I don't think she was redeemed too quickly either. But um, here's my question. Does Charlotte's friendship with Trixie remind you of your friendship with Kathleen Barr? Uh, does it? Well, we can get kind of naughty in sessions. We get a little jokey around and there's, you know, there's we definitely sort of get into trouble sometimes. So maybe a bit in that regard. Um, and we do, I don't know, we do, because we've known each other for so long, we do have a, a rapport. But I think we're probably, overall, we're probably better behaved than, well, Kathleen definitely is better behaved than Trixie is. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty well behaved. That's a good question. <laughs> How did you get discovered as a voice actress? How did you get discovered? Oh, um, well, like I said, I was 13, and so I was going on all these auditions. And I went for an audition for something, I don't, a voiceover audition, I don't remember what it was for. And I was in the studio and I was reading my audition, and um, a director for a show called Captain Zed and the Dream Team, I think that's what it was called, it was a long time ago, he was walking through the studio when I had my audition, and he said, oh, and I was a kid, he said, oh, we need a kid for an episode of this show that we're doing next week. And, I don't know, she, she sounds okay, so let's get her to do it. So I got the audition, I didn't get the audition that I went in to audition for, I got this whole other thing, so the director just happened to be there. And that's what happens a lot when you're an actor, a lot of it is luck. I mean, it's hard work and it's um, all that stuff, but, but in terms of catching breaks, sometimes it's just being in the right place at the right time, so. So I did that, and I was one of the only, at that time, voiceover was just getting going in Vancouver, so I was one of the only young women in town who had experience doing it, and uh, I guess that, that served me well, because I sort of just kept getting role after role, and here we are, oh, years later. <laughs> uh, if you can recall, what is the weirdest one you've ever had recorded, or at least the one that makes the least sense out of the context. The weirdest line? Yes. Or the weirdest character. Weirdest line. Oh, so many. <laughs> um, most of them are probably not repeatable with young people in the audience. Because <laughs> sometimes that Japanese anime gets pretty woogie woogie. Um, you know, it's almost weird when you play food. I played talking food. I'm in, um, this is another one that I probably can't repeat any of the lines I've had to say, but I'm in Sausage Party, which is Seth Rogen's Yeah. So there are lots of things I said for that one that I've never had to say for cartoons before. I play uh, one of the buns, one of the buns, and I play a, a grape, and, um, and one of the humans. And actually, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't, I don't even know how it turned out. But, um, but yeah, so there's probably some stuff I had to say. Uh, it's always, yeah, it's weird when you play normally inanimate things. That's always kind of... Yeah, it was a bit jarring. I was seeing that you're playing Foo, and it's like this list of like all the stuff you have to say. Yeah. yeah. The audition for that one was interesting, if you can imagine. There's expletives in every single line. Cool. Every single thing. <laughs> oh, that one's funny. If you were an element, if you could be an element of harmony, what would you be? Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, well, Fluttershy is my favorite, so I think kindness. I think that's. I mean, we can get into a big debate about it, but I think that's the root of all, of all friendships is kindness, love, and and so yeah, that's what I would pick. And sometimes it's the hardest. So, yeah. What do you think Starlight Glimmer actually has the potential to do by being a good character now, like maybe becoming an alicorn someday or something like that? I don't know. That'd be pretty amazing. She's got a long way to go before alicorn status is achieved, if it ever is. Um, you know, Larson. Larson. <laughs> Larson. Get on it. No, I don't know. Um, 
Magic-wise, I think she's capable of almost anything. I, sh I think she's prob like she's enormously talented. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting to see. I, I know as well as you guys kind of where they're going to take her. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if she would best serve being an alicorn. At the end of the day, I trust the writers of the show and that they're going to do something unexpected and interesting with her because they always yeah. do. That's yeah. that's what they do yeah. on the show. Um, and they never quite give us what we want when we want it. It's always a surprise. So, yeah, I don't know. Interesting to see what she does. Yes. I first heard you as Barbie from some of the really early stuff in like <laughs> 2000. Oh, yeah. And with like Princess and the Popper, I know that two Barbies and that don't actually, it's not you singing. So have you right. had any singing experience before My Little Pony? Uh, there are other shows that I've had to sing on, um, but I don't really think of myself as a, as a super competent singer. And frequently, that's a very common thing that happens in shows where they get someone to do the voice acting and then they get someone else to do the singing. And in, and in Barbie's case, they got Melissa Lyons to do the majority of the songs that Barbie had to sing, and she's a Broadway singer. So they probably made a really good choice doing that. And it's amazing, too, listening to her sing. I'm like, that's what I would sound like if I was a really good singer. Because we're a very good match. She sounds like me, but an amazing singer. Um, but yes, I've had to sing for other things. Uh, but probably the majority of this, like the heavy lifting in terms of singing I've done has been recently on this show. I attribute that to being a bit more confident with my singing and taking singing classes because I've never really been a confident singer. So I'm trying, I'm working on it, trying to get there. I'm trying to be brave. It's a scary thing to sing, I think. Hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, clearing up uh, Rebecca Schoikett's pronunciation of her last name. Schoikett. Schoikett. Yeah. Um, but my question is, what's more fun, uh, to play a good character or a bad character? Well, uh, Always the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, bad guys are pretty fun. Pretty fun. Although a character like Pinky would be really fun. Sometimes when you play really high energy characters, that can be fun too. Even if they're even if they're quote unquote good. It's always fun to play characters that are the farthest away from yourself. I find. Because they're challenging. That's fun. I'm not sure if you've heard of the 75% rule from James and, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, um, what, what was, like, what do you think of it? <laughs> so the 75% rule, so Ian James Corlett, um, came up with this thing called the 75%, I think we're talking about the same thing, where he only, he only commits to a character 75%. So he does, you know, if he's playing a character like Pinkie Pie, for example, he's not going to explode his voice or something by going 100%. Um, and then he's always got a little bit of somewhere, somewhere to go. Um, I think technically that's probably a good thing to do in terms of like pressure on your vocal cords. In terms of performance, I always try to give 100%. But if I'm doing something screamy in terms of volume or physical effort that I'm using with my voice, I like to try to do a little bit under what I can actually do, because you can hurt your voice if you go too far. All right, but mostly that's a joke. He's, Ian's pretty brilliant. Okay, Miss Sheridan. Hi. Now, of all the episodes that I've watched with Starlight Glimmer in recent times, do you seriously think that you telling Twilight to be quiet was something <laughs> you wanted to do? Yeah! yeah. yeah. It worked, didn't it? Yeah! Uh, you can blame Larson for that one. I didn't write the line. And you know, it's funny. I didn't realize what an impact that would have. I just thought, yeah, that makes sense. She's she's in charge. She doesn't need this pony kind of trying to uh, uh, um, overturn her authority or undermine her. Um, yeah. So it probably wasn't a good idea. It probably wasn't the best idea, but it worked in the moment. <laughs> He gives a quiet now. Go ahead. Interrupt me at eight years point. Go ahead and scream quiet. Quiet! <laughs> you can blame Mitch for writing that. He's the one who wrote it. I just had to say it. 
Did you actually, have people actually asked you to write that out for them on their autographs? I always do. I mean, people don't ask, actually. I just add it. Like, Great to meet you, or whatever. One of the little messages. Quiet. Love, Kelly Sheridan. Love, 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 sparkles. And then P.S. Quiet! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so growing up, I'd like to know what have been your favorite nostalgic uh, TV shows or cartoons? Uh, the Muppets, for sure. Yeah, I think my childhood, my that was a formative experience watching the Muppets as a kid. It's probably a big part of the reason why I'm an actor. And so yeah, anything Jim Henson did, magic. Mm, what else did I love as a kid? I was just. Have you guys seen Stranger Things yet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I saw. And it. pretty much everything they do in that movie. <laughs> I was right. I'm pretty much. I'm probably the same age. Those kids are portrayed as. Yeah. Miss Kelly, uh, you know how you were covering your cutie mark and pretending not to have one. Yeah. Were there any other things you imagined Starlight Glimmer also pretending? Like, did she have her own secret stash of muffins? So they didn't oh, yeah. Them, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I don't think that she's one of those people where Enjoyers. the rules don't apply yeah. to her. Okay. Yeah, I think she, I can imagine her sneaking out in the middle of the night to the next town over and getting, like, the good food <laughs> and the good clothes, but she can only try them on by herself in her house. She's like, oh, no, I'll wear the burlap cape. I'll do that. I'll get right on that tomorrow. She's just, like, got some of, like, Rarity's creations or something. <laughs> in the closet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at her house, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah if that's the problem with um, people in her position is the, the danger comes when the rules suddenly don't apply to you. Don't apply to the people in charge, because you're special. What is your favorite season six scene with Starlight? Could you say a line of control? Uh -oh. um, I think so far it's been Heart Swarming Tale. That might be the, my favorite episode of hers ever that I've recorded so far. And I can't remember any of the lines! <laughs> yeah. Um, but that song was pretty fun. Yeah, that was great. Oh, oh, sorry. Say Goodbye to the Holiday was pretty fun. To yeah. Yeah. But so fun! I mean, come on. Yeah. I always loved speak singing. They think they're so sweet. Yeah. She's just standing on her balcony. I love it. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Well, uh, two things. First off, I think you're really underselling yourself on your singing voice. It's really good. Oh, thank you. And, se and secondly, uh, of course, if there was, you won't be able to answer because of uh, non-disclosure agreements. But if you could have an episode of Discord, would you want this oh season God. or anytime soon? Oh, that'd be amazing. Of course, I can't imagine what the combo of those two together would be like. Oh, relapse. They would either love each other or it'd be Armageddon. Like, I really don't know. Armageddon. I really don't, or both. Yeah, maybe both. They would love each other and it would be Armageddon. Yeah, that'd be a fantastic combo. There's that, That's the fun thing about the show is you, there's so many characters at this point. It's fun to imagine all the combinations. Right, yeah. and the fandom would go nuts. Almost all of them would work. Like, almost all of the combinations that you can imagine would be like, oh yeah, that'd be really interesting. Uh, side note, we were talking in the unknown event yesterday, we were talking about how it would be so fun to see an episode with Discord's family. Like, oh, where sure. it, it doesn't even have one. I thought it'd be super yes. fun if they were really normal. Really, he's the outlier like in the Puritan. family. Yeah. Well, but yeah, that'd be fantastic. Well, who knows? Maybe one day we'll see. It'd be a cool combo. Well, actually, if you uh, the Jim Barrow Discord Discord watch up, he does have a pet fish. He does. Oh. Or Q for short. Well, Mike, check your mic, man. <laughs> Mike, you're dying. On Is it a goldfish? It is actually. Oh. Oh, because it's a book, right? We don't yeah. see it. Yeah. Well, I agree. I think you're totally underselling yourself on your singing voice because you did such a great job and uh, say goodbye to the holiday. But my question is, um, if you could have an episode with any character other than Discord, uh, what character would you want to have an episode with? Nice. Maud. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty cool. She's pretty cool. Yeah, Maud's pretty cool. <laughs> I asked this question to Peter yesterday, and he asked it to you too. Do you like pizza? I love pizza. 
I'm gluten intolerant though, so pizza doesn't like me very much. Oh. But I eat it when I when I can find ones that I can eat. Yeah, pizza's your friend. Like the pizza. Love the pizza. Yeah. Hey, you said that you really love the voice and bad character for the no, what's that? The good but guy, bad guy exercise? It's like you say one line, the first that has a good guy and then it has a, a bad guy. And the, the um, simple line is, my God, it's sunny outside. Oh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Do you guys want to do good? Sure. Yeah. Is, that the is that the line I should say? Sure. Okay, so good guy first. Ready? Yes. My God, it's sunny outside. Bad guy? My God, it's sunny outside. <laughs> That's fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that more often. It's kind yeah. of like a fun, fun game. Do it. Have you ever had a a role or a character that you kind of felt like uncomfortable? You know, like you know, like I'm not. I don't feel like you know really doing this. I'm. It's not really me or anything like that. Um, I've had roles that have been really challenging. That I felt. That I felt unsure about whether I was going to be able to do well, for sure. And there have been one or two roles that I've declined to do because ethically I felt like I couldn't play yeah. a role. You don't want to do it, like, it's not, not, what I, not, not what I really like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily have to relate to a character. I don't have, they don't have to be the same as me. They don't have to have the same ethics and values. But there have been projects, one or two projects specifically for commercial projects where I'm advertising something that I personally feel like I don't ethic I, I'm not able to ethically you know endorse nice. yeah okay um, but that doesn't that's happened very rarely very rarely maybe like two or three times in my Thank career. you Steve. yeah okay. you mentioned um, Discord and Starlight together well I have another one like what if Diamond Tiara and Starlight Glimmer met together <laughs> <laughs> So well, Diamond, she's Diamond Tiara. She's she's learned she's learned her lesson. Hopefully, maybe. So at this point, they they probably get along okay. I think. It's funny though. All the Cutie Mark Crusaders have sort of like a big sister pony figure in their lives. So I wonder if Starlight would ever have her own little little sister. Pony. I don't know who that would be. Or little brother or whatever. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. If she was a mentor to somebody, we kind of need to see that someday. So the ultimate question for forcing Starlight Gummer, equality or inequality? <laughs> <laughs> equality in the true sense, sense of the of word. word. Yeah. In, the, in the true sense of the word. I think equality is important. And so is diversity. And I think you can have both of those things simultaneously. As the mother of, of kids who have enjoyed MLP and a variety of other characters as well, and writing and art and all of that that MLP has kind of brought to the surface, awesome. I'm curious for you as a voice actress, how I, I hear you speak and I think she seems really connected with character and your fellow voice actors and voice actresses and how that compares to traditional actors and actresses you just seem like you have a much better feel for the characters and invested in them as their characters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you feel that that's more the case with voice acting as opposed to I don't you know, know. Acting? I don't know. I think the nice thing about being an actor is every actor has their own process and their own way of approaching their work. And that depends, I mean, that depends on like a multiple of different factors, how you're trained and who you are as a person. And, and, but I do, I can say that all the voiceover actors I work with are really, um, are really professional and they think a lot about the characters they play and what their motivation is and, and um, 
you know, what's happening to them in a scene. I think my approach comes mostly from my theatre training, from theatre school, and that's how we're taught to approach a character, is to just be very curious about them, and, and, um, and then a lot of the technique I have kind of relates to that. So I don't know if that's something that's specific to voiceover, because I've worked with people who don't necessarily do voiceover that, that are similar in that way. Alright guys, I'm time for one more. Okay. Um, in the season 5 finale, um, where like Star Starlight Glimmer is um, being Twilight, um, with um, defeating her every time, yeah. what was your opinion of that? <coughs> um, it's the that was kind of scary, to be honest. <laughs> the first time I read the script, I went, what am I going to do? <laughs> How am I going to get out of this? I think... Uh, I think it's something we hadn't seen before. I think Twilight had to solve that problem on her own, first of all. Well, she had Spike, which is nice. But she didn't have the main six. They didn't power up and create some big magical thing together. So that was kind of, I think it was an interest, it, kind of interesting from Twilight's perspective. Right. And it was kind of interesting to see that character struggle in that way. And at the end of the day, handle things the way she's best, which is um, friendship and kindness. She couldn't beat her magically. So she had to, and she couldn't beat her. She had to um, persuade ch change her, her pers or persuade her, or embrace her, whatever you know, one of the you want to use to describe that. Yeah. It was a pretty cool episode to play. I did a lot of screaming in that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I went in with this whole grand idea of how nuanced my performance was going to be, and how part of it was going to be just quietly indulging in her winning and part of it was going to be you know bombastic and they went no nope, just scream the whole thing she's really angry she is really hurt and upset you need to just go for broke so that's when I used the Ian Corlett's 75% scream. 100% character commitment 75% vocal screaming commitment <laughs> Now, what team are you in Pokemon Go, though? <laughs> I haven't played Pokemon Go. Neither have I. I was here for Kelly Sharon! Yeah.